I'm Dave Ganscop from the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center with an Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. Over the coming days, we want to discuss some issues about stock water on rangelands in both summer and winter seasons. Water is obviously necessary for life and is the single most limiting factor affecting livestock distribution on arid rangelands. Some years ago, Forrest Sneva looked at the effects of watering frequency on average daily gains of cattle. There were three treatments, with the first being free choice water, the second access to water once per day, and the third access to water every other day. With free choice water, cattle used nine and a half gallons a day. Once daily cattle used eight gallons per day, and every other day watering dropped consumption to six and a half gallons. Weight gains averaged 1.2 pounds per day for free choice cattle, a surprising 1.4 pounds per day for once per day watering, and nine tenths of a pound per day with every other day access to water. This suggested once per day watering was superior for cows, but results were different for their calves, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. This week we're talking about stock water on rangelands and mentioned yesterday that cattle with access to water once per day drink less water but gain more weight than cattle that can drink any time they want. Calves didn't exhibit the same responses though. Any restriction in water intake by cows appears to affect their calves. Calves whose mothers had water any time they wanted gained about two pounds per day. When a cow was watered every other day, she did well, but likely produced less milk, and her calf gained about three-tenths of a pound less per day than those who had free access to water. This doesn't seem like much difference, but if we expand those numbers over a two-month period, we have an 18-pound difference between calves. If one markets about 200 calves, that turns into 3,600 pounds of lost profit if water intake was limited. This week we're discussing effects of stock water availability on cattle performance and today we'll look at how trailing long distances to water affects cattle gains. In our arid sagebrush country we don't always have an abundance of forage around and cattle are forced to walk long distances as they graze. Most textbooks suggest cattle try to remain within a mile of water but they will range out about a mile and a half if forage is limited. Years ago, Forrest Sneva studied cattle that had water nearby and others that had to trail about a mile to get to water each day. Cows in those studies had the same weight gains at about eight-tenths of a pound a day. If a cow had to hike a mile in and a mile out from water, though, her calf gained about three-tenths of a pound less per day than those not taking the walk. Cows with water close by usually watered twice a day and would hang around water for a few hours. Cows that had to hike to water drank once per day and immediately went back out to pasture. Supplying winter stock water can be a tiring and continuous battle when our temperatures dip below zero. Running heaters or letting the pump run continuously are two means of keeping tanks ice free but both practices incur expenses. It's long been preached that eating snow might cause an animal's energy needs to rise 15 or 20 percent to maintain body temperature. Studies in recent years, however, have found similar feed intake and weight gains among cattle accessing either water or snow. It turns out that with an adequate quality diet, excess heat from rumen fermentation processes provides more than enough energy for melting and warming water. If we look around, we see deer, elk, bighorn sheep, wild horses, and pronghorn often getting through winter with no free water around. Some studies in Canada and Montana suggest cattle have the same abilities and that they can indeed do quite well using snow as their only source of water. There might be a learning curve, though, for some animals, and we'll talk about that some more tomorrow. With winter here, keeping stock water flowing is a perpetual battle. Some recent Montana studies, 
where instruments were set up to weigh cattle each day as they came to water, generated some fascinating results. First was that only 65% of their cows watered daily. Some watered every other day, and still others never came to water for over two months. All did equally well at maintaining weight, regardless of their preference. Canadian ranchers and scientists report cattle existing on snow grazed longer each day and sporadically eat snow throughout the day. Warnings issued, though, include first, that cattle need a quality diet or protein supplement to keep digestion going. Second, snow should be loose or partially melted since cows don't paw at packed surfaces to break things up. Third, snow use is a learned behavior, so some older cows should be around to serve as examples. Lastly, sporadic watering will confuse and concentrate cattle around central points, so don't bring water if it's really not needed. I'm Dave Ganscop. Be careful out there, and we'll see you again.